Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. It may seem a little bit strange that you're reading that, but no, I have been thinking about it for a long time. What would you tell your 16-year-old self? And this has been on my mind quite a lot recently, especially as we find ourselves in yet again a third lockdown. And of course, when you're in your home and you have that sort of ability to be able to take yourself out of a situation, your mind starts to almost play a trick on you and you revisit your past. And it may even come across that, that I'm quite down or quite depressed, but no, that's not at all. That's not, that's not it at all. Um, but what it does sort of make me think is that what would I do differently and what, or rather, what would I have done differently or sort of what do I need to change now going ahead into the future? So I'm still really young. So I'm 27. Um, but I very often look back at things which I perhaps would have done slightly differently or completely differently or not done at all. And very often, for some reason, I keep coming back to that age of 16. Now, when I was 16, of course, I was just finishing school and everything was fantastic. Everything was really, really brilliant. I didn't really have a worry in the world. But at that time, I wonder if I actually thought that. So something for me, which has been going over my mind a lot lately, is what would I tell myself at that age? So first of all, the thing which I would tell myself, and perhaps you can relate to that as well, is that at 16 and from right from when I started secondary school. So if you if we if we work on the basis from about the ages of about 13 to 16, what would I have told myself then? knowing what I know now. So number one, secondary school or high school, whatever you want to refer it to, for me, was fantastic. Never had any problems at all. But looking back on it, one thing which I would absolutely tell myself at 16 is just stop. Stop right there. Stop what you're doing. Um, so if it would be midterm, summer holiday, summer break, whatever you want to call it, I would first of all be telling myself to stop. Because what I used to do throughout school was I used to study really, really hard and I used to literally shut everybody else out. So I grew up uh, with a fantastic bunch of friends um, and it was, it was really, really good, really, really good. What I would say is that where I studied and studied and I paid attention and I was academically switched on, wanting sort of that little bit more to be that little bit more better, to keep on improving and improving and improving, and very often just sort of chasing, I suppose, success. But of course, at school, not in the outside world, in a career, um, but chasing success at school is probably the best way to put it, actually. But in, of course, doing that, what I actually done was blocked out other experiences or let experiences pass me by. So, for example, my group of friends and things. Now, I very, very often wish that I could I could go back as opposed to sort of not necessarily wishing, not wishing the time back, but I wish I could go back and I could tell myself, do you know what? You should have made just that little bit more effort with the people, your, your, your friends around you. You should have sort of almost concentrated not just on the schooling, you should have enjoyed life at the time. Because I remember so, so often, my my friends, mates, whatever, again, whatever you want to call it, um, at the time, asked me to do things, sort of really trying to involve me. But for me, it was just, no, I've got this project I need to work on. No, I've got this coursework I need to work on. No, I've got this exam to study with. That was what my last years of schooling was. And then when I first started, it was, no, no, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. I've got this to do or I've got that to do. There was always an excuse. And I just wish that I would be able to turn around and tell myself at that age, just stop, breathe, you will be fine. Because I think throughout my whole sort of high school years, I was so sort of worried and concerned with you have to be successful, you have to be successful. And of course, I suppose in a way I've taken that into that trait into adulthood that I'm so, so sort of occupied with that thought that what if I'm not going to be successful? And you know what? It comes to the question, doesn't it? that success is different for us all. Success for some of us is that real high top flying job. For some of us, it could be moving to a different country. For some of us, it could be being married and having an amazing family. Success is measured, of course, on a whole different sort of scale for everybody. It could be something which other people may think is small. It could be something which is thought as being absolutely huge for another person. It could even be measured in monetary value, of course, the amount of money you've got in the bank.
But for me, I really wish I could have told my 16 year olds me, <laughs> I wish I could tell me back at 16, just slow down, calm down, enjoy life. Pretty sad when you think about it, isn't it? I didn't make any mistakes. And then again, perhaps I should have. Perhaps I should have. Because then, of course, you, you learn from that, don't you? Whereas I think for me, right from sort of a very early age, I sort of real buckled down, worked hard. Yes, OK, I got the rewards from my schooling and my education. Um, has it made me happy? Yes. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really proud that of my career in accountancy and finance and everything and my, all my college courses and, and my higher level education. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm really, really pleased and proud and happy. But do I feel accomplished? No. And I think and I think that very often some days I do, some days I don't. But I think I think when you think about it, that could well be because at that sort of age, I was so concentrating on success, I must push forward, and I must achieve all of this, and I must do this, and I must do that. And I think the pressure which just society alone puts on young people, teenagers, even in your 20s, even in your 30s, to be quite honest with you, that you must achieve something by a certain age, you must achieve something. And you know what, I think I ran away with that, and in the end, what I actually done was I blocked a lot of things out. Number one, for example, the people around me, the mates around me, I kind of almost shut them out. And I wish I could have told my 16 year old me to sort of say, do you know what? Take a moment, relax and just enjoy your time. Lark about, have fun and just enjoy, enjoy yourself. And I think I was always very often if sort of I'd seen my mates do that or if I was in a class where perhaps everyone was acting a little bit sort of, I don't know, letting go, having fun, whatever you want to call it. Um, there was me sort of, I must get this done, I must get that done. And if there was a person sort of with their head in books and really getting on with it, it was me. And yeah, that's great now. Absolutely, that's great. And I always used to tell myself that you can't have this amazing sort of social life and work really, really hard at school and be successful. But you can. And I could have. I don't regret it. I just wish that I could tell my 16 year old self that. Yeah. What else do you think I would be telling myself at 16, do you think? So again, that moves us nicely on to worrying. Outside of school, outside of education, it was worrying, worrying all the time. It was a particularly difficult year, I think, as well. And from about 14, 15, 16, it's when I started my, when I started losing my hearing quite a bit. Um, and there was real change and hearing aids and things were really starting to change for me. And um, again, it was that sort of that real being so self-conscious of what was going on. Again, I kind of forgot to enjoy life in a way. Um, whether you, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people would be like that, to be quite honest with you, um, especially with having a hearing condition, because it's strange now. I don't remember how I used to hear, because of course it's a sense. But um, back then, of course, I was very, very attuned into what was happening um, and the difficulty as well. So I wish I would be able to turn around and tell myself it will all be OK. But of course, how? We wouldn't we wouldn't know that it will all be OK. Um, everyone's right in hindsight, isn't it? That's the saying. But um, yeah, that's something which I really wish that I could have told myself it will all be OK. Um, let's let's move on. So the next thing would be not to take your physical health for granted. Now, you may think I'm still very young to be worrying about physical health, but over the past couple of years, that is something I wish I could go back on. All my sort of hernia related problems, which gave me a lot of problems with my leg, all stemmed from, I believe, sort of what I was doing at the time and a particular fall on holiday. And I wish I never got on this sort of cycle bike with about six, eight people on and that real sort of strenuous activity. I was one of the people cycling at the front with alongside my brother and I could feel pressure and something sort of in my groin straight after. Um, so I wish I could tell myself that. Um, but I don't I don't regret these things. This is not what I'm trying to say. This is just that I've been having these thoughts for a long time. And in my and in this sort of state of lockdown, it's sort of been something I've been quite fixed on. So on my channel, as you will know, if you are one of my absolutely treasured, thank you very much, subscribers, um, 
My channel is all about the good and bad, the bumpy road of life, as well as good and the ups and downs. And that's that's what this is all about. So sort of getting it out there, voicing it. And if I can help somebody with it, then amazing. And it, But it does help me as well. So those sort of things are certainly what I would certainly tell myself. And when I say not to take your physical health for granted, then, and I'm sure I will get back to this, I'm absolutely, fingers crossed, got it in my mindset that I will get my old sort of physical health back. But what I would sort of tell myself is then, when I could really run around, jump around, sort of all this real strenuous activity, and I would just take it for granted, what I would tell myself then is just go steady. Just take care, even as young as you are, just go steady. And I still do it now. I don't I don't sometimes listen to my own, my own sort of... Um, words because I, I do just do things without thinking about it and then I am left with the repercussions and I am left feeling uncomfortable and in pain and things because I do think I am young I should still be able to get on and do these things but as they say hey ho <laughs> I can't can't go back can you but this is just something which just sprung to mind what would you tell your 16 year old self so let's just recap number one have fun stop being so silly and stop concentrating so much so a lot of people would probably be saying that they wish they weren't harder. I wished I switched off at times and I wished I just had fun. Next, what I wish I would have done is I wish I would have really spent a lot more time with my mates and friends around me and really, really kept those bonds, those relationships. Um, then my next sort of thing is sort of on the fence about this one is don't take your physical health for granted and sort of tell yourself, just go careful. So those are my sort of things which I would have really, really told myself. And you know what? This isn't meant to be sort of a sound thing, but um, I suppose it is. It is quite a sort of, it is a little bit of an upsetting one, is if I'd have told my 16 year old self to value and I did, and I did always value my relationships with my older relatives. And here I'm talking about my nan. Um, my nan has Alzheimer's, and it has been one hell of a journey. And I have, and I have stood with her right from the very start of her journey, very, very close, always with my nan. And growing up, I used to stay with her, and she's she's like a second mum to me. But I just wish I would have been able to have told my 16 year old self that Do you know what, tell these people that you love them all the time. Tell them, tell them, tell them. And I'm sure my nan knew, but of course now she has Alzheimer's and she's a very different lady now. Um, and I'm telling her I love her all the time. But back then when she was perfectly fine and she didn't have a problem with her mind, um, and she was nan. <sighs> yeah, I used to give my nan hugs and that all the time. And but then, of course, when you're a teenager, you torment, don't you? And you play tricks and you play jokes and all those things. And, and I wish I would have told my 16-year-old self, do you know what? With what the future's got in store, just tell Nan that you love her. So I really, really wish I could do that, to be honest. I wish I would have, I wish I could tell my 16-year-old self that now. But there, there we go. So that's all about what I would tell my 16-year-old self. And I'm sure there's a few other things right now. Probably not to wear your hair so short, 0.5 around the sides and blended it on top. That's always what I used to have or a one or two, sorry, around the back and sides blended on top. Yeah, always super short. But do you know what? This summer we might well be going back to that. Might be. Not too sure yet. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much about all. Yeah, absolutely. And perhaps there was a girlfriend, which I really, really wish I would have stayed in touch. But there we go. All these things at 16, isn't it? But um, would I want to be 16 now? No. Having said that, though, when I've just mentioned that, my best friend when I was 16 was a girl who I really, really liked. And I always, always wished, and I still wish, now that I would have that I would have opened up and I would have said how I felt, but I didn't. I was always just the friend, which was great at the time, and I would have never wanted to have jeopardised that. But, um... I still know of her now, but she's in a completely different stage of her life to me, and it's just something I wouldn't, um, yeah, negative, isn't it? But there we go. I would, um, you can learn from yourself, can't you? What is the saying? Or is it says, do not let your past define your future, and that's what I'm holding on to at the moment. Um, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you know what? This has been good. This has been good to air these things sort of on my channel sort of it almost feels that I'm sharing this if you have any questions or if you're going through about the same thing and you're and you're thinking yeah I'm going through that as well 
let me know. Leave me a comment down below. Subscribe, have a chat, I will get back to you straight away as quick as I can. As ever, this means the world to me. Thank you very much for watching this. And until next time, stay positive. I wish you good mental health. Stay well and safe throughout this lockdown. And I wish us all to have a very, very fantastic, moving forward, positive 2021. Okay, until next time, we'll see you then. Bye-bye now.